My name is Jay Dixit, and I am not a programmer. So that's going to come into play here because what I'm going to talk about today is cool shell apps, shell commands that I've found as a non-Unix user and non-programmer, but the things that I've found kind of fun. So like I said, I'm not a programmer. Uh, I teach writing and storytelling, and I'm a writer. That's my company, Storytelling NYC. And so here are some things that I've found along the way. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about is uh, something called Spotify, like Spotify, but with bash, shell, sh, so Spotify. Spotify. So if I flip, I'm going to flip over to my uh, terminal window here. So um, I have a shortcut. Spotify is just SP. So I can enter a, the name of a song here. And very quickly, oh, it didn't come up. Uh, let me try something else. Uh oh, live demos. Yeah, uh, let's name another song. Um, Okay, that's not working right now. <laughs> that's weird. All right. Uh, that used to work. I probably need to update it or something. So I'll show you guys something called Piano Bar, which is Pandora. So this is a shell interface to Pandora. And you can do all the things that you would normally do. Like you can rate songs, skip songs. Um, yeah. So that's Pandora. Don't play that too long because we may have to yeah, just, buy the license for that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Under 18 seconds. Yeah. There you go. It's there Fair use. Too. Okay. Yeah. So I'm often in places where I'm frustrated by how slow my internet is and I want to check the internet. So there's a website called fast.com where you can do that. And uh, there's a command line interface. So, so I can just type fast. Uh, from the command line, and it will quickly assess the speed and report back to me with uh, how fast my connection is. There we go. Pretty fast connection here. Yeah. Okay. We work hard at that. Yeah. And that's going to go. Oh, go back up. There you go. Um, some of you might have heard of CMUS. This is like the iTunes of the command line. So um, here we go. It's just like a, it's just a music player. You can load your MP3 library. That's awesome. So it works just like an iTunes type thing, but it's from the command line. Does cool. that, would that interface with iTunes then? Uh, nope, but it can easily find your iTunes library. Okay. So you can just, you know, it prompts you for your path for where your MP3s are. Basically. And then, yeah. So it's not Mac specific then? Oh, not at all, yeah. Okay, that's good enough. Exactly. Uh, something called YouTube DL. Some of you know this. Yeah, I use this a lot. It allows you to download a YouTube video. So if I go to, let's say, here's a YouTube video about Louis C.K. deciding to quit the internet. So I can just type, uh, my shortcut is YT. I can enter the URL and it starts to download the actual video file. You can also download, you can set it to download MP3s instead. Um, so I find that useful. There's also something called Instagram Save. So Instagram <laughs> doesn't allow you, by the way, this is my Halloween costume. Which one's Matt Damon? Uh, <laughs> I think they're both Matt Damon. All right. Um, so if I wanted to save from Instagram, it prevents you from doing that because uh, they don't want you to save. So I can just copy the URL and I have a little shortcut insta, and then it'll save that file to one of my directories. That's awesome. So that's kind of fun. Let's see. Oh, Google Translate. I use this all the time. This is my favorite way to use Google Translate. Instead of navigating to a browser and then entering it in drop down menu to choose the source language and choose the target language, uh, Google Translate has a command line interface. So uh, I can type in uh, the language I want to translate to, like for instance here I, I say I want to translate to French, is colon fr. So I could say translate hello into French, and it will tell me there it is. Bonjour. Bonjour. Um, and if I want to uh, translate from French, I can do fr colon, 
and then it'll translate into my default language, which is English. Fr colon, I can say bonjour, translate that back into English. Oops, it's TRA. There we go. Um, and that'll translate. I can also translate from one language um, to another. So from French into Spanish, I can say bonjour from French to Spanish, and it'll tell me the answer in Spanish. So it's just an easy way to interface with Google Translate. Uh, lots of times I want to quickly look something up without going onto Wikipedia, uh, but I could want to do it from the command line, so I can just get a quick command line explanation of something like I just typed. So like uh, just the top section of the. Just the top section, yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, and then there's, it tells me, gives me a little link if I want to read more. Uh, I also sometimes try to write bad poetry, so uh, there's something called Rhyme Zone. Rhymezone.com, it's the same thing. It's a inter web interface. You can type it and enter how many syllables you want, but sometimes I find it easier just to do it from the command line. So I typed R space nice, and then it gives me my different, my rhymes for that word separated by syllables. One syllable, two syllables, three syllables, and so on. Uh, sometimes I might be texting somebody and want an emoji. Um, so I can, there's a app called Emoj, I think it's called Emoj, uh, and so it will suggest some emoji for me, uh, or, <laughs> there you go. That way I don't have to Google, like, snake emoji, best one, and then copy and paste, I can just do it straight from the command line. Uh, I like how for snake it gave you heart eyes. <laughs> yeah. Check. Yeah. Or a check mark, yeah. There must be some logic to it, who knows? Uh, there's various weather apps. One of them is called WeGo, that was the one that I settled on from the command line, so gives you a quick weather forecast. I love the uh, ASCII art. Yeah, right? Uh, oh yeah, when I was setting up my weather app, I realized that I needed to provide my lat and long, so I found another little app called Where Am I? Oops. That's not how you spell where am I. Where am I? That tells you where you are. Um, oh, yeah. As a writer, I use a lot of dictionaries, <coughs> and I find it handy to have lots of dictionaries quickly uh, at my fingertips. So there's one called WordNet, so I can D spaces for define, and it just gives me a quick definition. Actually, my favorite dictionary is the American Heritage Dictionary, which I have shortcut it to AH. Uh, and sometimes I find it fun to use this old-fashioned dictionary, uh, Webster's 1913 Dictionary. Uh, it gives you... Specifically the 1913? The 1913 edition, so it gives you the old-timey. So if I Google, let's say, justice, uh, it says the subject is... Uh, what does it say? <laughs> did, did it say that? Yeah. Oh. Is it Webster? Webster is not... Try that again. There we go. 1913. Uh, the quality of being just, conformity to the principles of righteousness and rectitude in all things, strict performance of moral obligations, practical <laughs> conformity to the human or divine law. You probably wouldn't get that definition if you looked that up in regular dictionary. Yeah. Uh, show you one last thing on Emacs, which is there's a, something called hacker typer mode. Um, this is just for fun, uh, which is I activate hacker typer mode, and then I can just uh, very quickly, <laughs> if I want to create a little wow. Emacs code, <laughs> impress people who are coming into the room. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's what I got. That's Thanks, guys.